we're going to have a look at some past exam questions on factorising. So here we see an example from the Gauteng Department of Education's exam um, from 2015, where they give you this question 3.2 says factorise completely. So they don't tell you what factorising technique you need to use. So let's start with 3.2.1. That pretty much to me looks like we're talking about a common factor that needs to come out. So let's look across all the numbers. We've got a 3, a 15 and 12. What number can divide into all of those? Well, clearly, it's going to be 3. So we can pull a 3 out. Now let's take a look at our P's. And you can see that although we've got a P squared here, we've only got a P here and a P here. So we can take out a P. Let's have a look at our Q's. We've got a Q, a Q squared and a Q. Well, then we can only take out a Q. All right, so what do we have left from here? Well, we've taken out the 3, we've taken out the Q, and from the P squared, we've taken out one of the P's, so we've got P left. What about here? Well, we've taken out a 3, so from the 15, we've got 5 left. We've taken out the P, and from the Q squared, we've taken out a Q, so we have Q left. And then for this one, from the 12, we've taken out a 3, so we have 4 left. And then we have taken out the P, we've taken out the Q, so we've got none of those left. And there we factorise nicely. We check, is there anything we can do here to factorise further? No, nothing, so we're finished. OK, let's move on to 3.2.2. We're asked to solve, to solve, to factorise this. OK, this is the kind of question they love to ask us because it can get quite confusing, but actually it's really simple once you see the trick. So I'm going to show you a simpler one first, and then we'll come back to this one. OK, so if you have a look, focus now on my simpler question. If I asked you to factorise this, the main thing I want you to notice is that here, this whole x minus 3, if you just treat it as one thing, then that's a common factor that you can take out. So there's an x minus 3 over here in this one, and there's an x minus 3 over here in this term. So we can take out that x minus 3. And what will be, we be left with from this term? Well, we've taken out the x minus 3, and we're left with a 3x. And from this term, we've taken out the x minus 3, so we're left with minus 2. So we can factorize this very nicely just by pulling out that bracket of x minus 3. OK. Now let's go back to the question we actually wanted to answer. Now here you go. I have a problem here because I do have brackets that look pretty similar, but they're not the same. Because here is x minus 3, and here is 3 minus x. The signs have kind of got reversed, right? Here you've got the x is positive, then you've got minus 3. And here you've got the 3 is positive, and you've got minus x. And this is the little trick they love to give you. Because... 3 minus x is just the negative of x minus 3. Look at what happens here. Negative times x gives you a negative x. Negative times a negative gives you a positive, so it gives you the positive 3. So if what you have in this bracket, x minus 3, is the same as this bracket, except the signs have been swapped around. Where there was a minus 3, there's now a 3. Where there was a minus x, there's an x. What you can know is that what you've got is just the 
negative of it. And so what we can do here in our very next step of this one is to go ahead and say, okay, I've got x minus 3, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the 3 minus x with a negative of x minus 3. So what I'm going to have is 2, negative 2, x minus 3. And now I'm in the situation of that simpler thing because I've got the x minus 3 as a common factor. And so I can go ahead and take out the x minus 3. And I'm left with a 3x from this one and a minus 2 from that one. So the main trick here is to notice that when you've got an x minus 3 and you've got a bracket that's the same except the signs are swapped, you can just turn it around and say x minus 3, but recognize that you've had to multiply through by a negative. Okay, so I've circled that little thing in red because it is a useful little trick to have in your back pocket. But let's go on to 3.2.3. Okay, here I can see the common factors and I always look for common factors first. So um, what can divide into 75 and also into 12? Well, it's definitely 3 that can divide into both of those. So I can take out a 3. And then if I focus my attention on the x's, well, here I've got x cubed, here I've got an x. So in total, I can take out a common factor of x. All right, so what's left from the 75? Well, 25 times 3 gives me 75. And what's left from the x cubed is just x squared. And then what's left from the 12? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. And I've taken out the x, so I've got no x's left. Now, this thing here, I should immediately recognize as my difference of two squares. And my difference of two squares is a lovely easy one. It's 5x, 5x, plus, and then a minus, and it's a 2 and a 2. Okay, let's do these three that come from the Eastern Cape exam from November 2019. So we start off with the first one. And again, this one I can identify quite easily. It's just pulling out a common factor, at least to start. So what can I take out in terms of numbers? Well, I've got a 3 and a 12. 3 divides into both of them. I then focus on my a's. And I've got a squared and a to the 4. So the most I can take out is a squared. And then I focus on my b's and there's only one b in 12a to the 4b, so the most I can take out is 1b. Okay, what is left from this? I've taken a 3, I've taken the a squared out, and I've taken 1b out, so I'm left with b squared. All right, and here I have taken out the 3, so I'm left with 4. From the a to the 4, I've taken out a squared, so I'm left with a squared, and then I've taken out the b. And now just be careful, because it's tempting to say, okay, I've factorized, yay, but always check. I've taken out a, con a common factor, but can I continue? And hopefully you look here and you see, hoo hoo, I recognize that as a difference of two squares. And difference of two squares is always easy to factorize. Right, the next one, well, I look at it and I can see. This is my standard trinomial to factorize, so off I go. It's an x and an x. I know that I need them to multiply together to give me negative 10 and add up to 3. If they're going to be multiplying to give me, together to give me negative 10, it's a positive multiplied by a negative or a negative multiplied by a positive. So let me look at the factors of 10. 
It could be 1 and negative 10, or of course negative 1 and 10, or I could be looking at 2 with a 5, negative 5, or negative 2 with 5, 3 doesn't go into 10, 4 doesn't go into 10, 5 we've got already. So here are all my pairs of integers that multiply together to give me negative 10, and I want to find the pair that adds up to negative 3. Well, it's going to be this pair here, the 2 with the negative 5, and so it's going to be plus 2 and the negative 5 there. And just to make me feel secure, I'm going to just multiply out, and I'll get x squared minus 5x plus 2x, minus 5x plus 2x does get me to minus 3x, and then plus 2 times minus 5 does get me to minus 10. I know I factorized correctly. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. And hopefully as you look at it, you see it's that funny little trick again, right? You've got a minus b, and this is kind of a minus b, except the signs have been swapped. And so we know that this is just the negative of that, right? If we take that and we multiply it by a negative, you'll get negative a like that, and you'll get plus b like that. So this is just the same as the negative of that. And so what we can say here is that we've got the negative of that. Now we have a nice common factor of a minus b that we can pull out. So we pull out our a minus b, and then from here, we will be left with a 4x. And from here, we'll be left with minus 3. And so we factorized.